So we're going to start with the discussion of the iterator pattern, which is a pattern that you've now had quite a bit of experience using, even if you've never sat down and thought specifically about what an iterator is uh, or the iterator pattern is. We've done a lot of work so far with STL iterators. Probably you've had some experience using Java iterators if you've done much Java programming. So today will hopefully be a, a review of a lot of this stuff based on what you've exp experienced before and expanding upon what you've experienced before. So as we always do, we're going to start out by talking about how the iterator pattern is applied in the context of our expression tree program in order to be able to access all the nodes in an expression tree in a flexible, extensible, and completely representational, neutral way. So the purpose of this pattern as applied in our context is to allow us to traverse the elements in aggregates, namely an expression tree, one element at a time without exposing the underlying composite-based representational details. So another way to look at this is you can think about iterator as decoupling the expression tree traversal from its internal structure. Now, there's a number of different places we need to use this capability. If you take a look at the uh, verbose mode, for example, there's this concept of printing every element in a tree. There's this concept of evaluating the contents of the tree in order to compute its yield. So those are examples of where we need to iterate and examine all the nodes in the tree. And even when we're in succinct mode, when there's just a prompt and we type in an expression, of course, in order to evaluate that expression, we need to first traverse the expression and uh, be able to, to compute the, the evaluated yield from it. So there's a bunch of different ways that, that the need for iteration shows up in the expression tree context. Well, of course, there's a number of different ways to do this. One way would be to hard code the traversal logic into the expression tree itself. So we could do, as I show here, where we have a method in the tree called traverse, and we pass in some kind of uh, reference or a object or a pointer called visitor or node visitor. And that would go ahead and traverse every element in the tree and do something to it. Uh, there's a couple of problems with doing things this way, however. Only one traversal of the tree at a time is allowed, so you'd only be able to do one thing. And this is what's often sometimes called an internal iterator. But uh, that's a bit inflexible. And another problem is that it, with this approach, it's hard to decide when you want to stop traversing. So when you use internal iteration, then it typically has to traverse through the entire range, or you have to do something very draconian, like throw an exception. And uh, that's probably overkill for many use cases. So another way to do this would be to expose the internal links that are used to represent the tree itself. So we could have methods that would be like, you know, get the right child, get the left child, and so on. And, and while it's certainly possible to do that, and in fact, we, we do that with our, our uh, component node hierarchy, that is also undesirable because the minute we make any changes to the representational details, we end up breaking a lot of stuff. So it's, it's really not a good idea to externalize the representational details, even if we abstract it to some extent by using methods, because when you start making changes to the representation, you break things. And it also has the problem that is each of the different data structures you have would be exposing their innards. And all the data structures, of course, use different ways of connecting the pieces together. Sometimes it's an array, as was, is the case with a vector. Sometimes it's a tree, as the case with a set or a map. Sometimes it's a hash table, as is the case with unordered set and unordered map. Sometimes it's a bunch of chunks that are connected together by pointers in the case of linked lists or, or decks and so on. And if we had to know different ways of traversing each data structure based on knowledge of its representation, that wouldn't be very canonical. It wouldn't be very uniform. So what we're going to do instead is we're going to make something called an iterator, which will be an object that encapsulates the traversal of an expression tree without actually requiring the client code that uses the expression tree to know how the tree is structured internally. So instead of hard coding things or instead of revealing the implementation details, we abstract away from that and treat this as a separate object altogether. So let's take a look at a very simple example that'll demonstrate one of a number of different traversals you can do on a binary tree. So this is post order traversal. And the way it works is you you start at the root of the tree and you go by each node on its left-hand side as you descend. 
the left-hand branches of the tree. And when you get to the final node in a traversal from the left-hand side, in this case, five, then you go ahead and you print it out. So five gets printed, then we continue back up the tree, minus gets printed, and we print this out as a, a little squiggle or a, a tilde, or sorry, it's, I guess it's the squig squiggle character. Um, and uh, we use that in post-order traversal because minus is ambiguous in post-order traversal. Next, we continue our traversal. We visit the three in the tree, then we visit the four in the tree, then we visit the plus, and then we finally visit the time, so the multiplication symbol. And that ends up with our post-order traversal of the tree. And you'll see when we talk later about how to design various things, that there are different traversal orders. This is just one of the canonical ones, the one that's called post-order traversal. So let's go ahead and take a look more generally at how you could use an iterator to enable this type of capability. So what you do is you start out by creating an iterator using some kind of factory method. And in our case, there's a method called begin, because we're kind of mimicking the way that STL works. And begin is going to take a string that tells it the traversal order we want to use. So it could be in order, post order, pre order, level order, or whatnot. And we get back an iterator, which I treat here as an auto, but of course under the hood, it's, it's gonna be expression tree colon colon iterator, because we have a trait defined to do that. And then we're gonna to check to see if we're done. So while the iterator is not done, in other words, we check against the end iterator, and as long as they haven't reached the point where they're equal, we're gonna go ahead and dereference the iterator and then call a method on that, which in this case is the accept method, passing in the visitor that we're gonna have, which in this case will be a print visitor. And that will go ahead and do something with that node. And then the last thing we do is we advance the iterator by one. And if you take a close look at this, you'll see that this is really trying to mimic the C, C style pointer arithmetic model. So you get an iterator, you check why you're not at the end, you do something with the iterator by dereferencing it, and then you go ahead and increment it by one or decrement it by one and, and so on and so forth. So that's basically the way we're going to use this in the context of our expression tree. Now, as we'll see, as, as we've discussed before, C++ STL defines a generic interface, and I'm using that word loosely, for traversing aggregate data. And the interface is in terms of all the different operations you can do on pointer arithmetic, like plus plus and minus minus, and so on and so forth. And so uh, if you take a look at the link at the bottom of this page, it'll give you a reminder about how all these different mechanisms work in, in STL and, and C++. So from a commonality and variability point of view, which is very important for our systematic reuse efforts, we can think about the iterator interface in C++ STL is giving us a common means to define iteration using the STL syntax. And then from a variability point of view, we can create or instantiate this for specific contexts with our traversal of the expression tree using different implementation strategies, using a creational pattern. And we'll talk about the implementation strategies in more detail in the next discussion on the strategy pattern. But for right now, we're just focusing on the concept of, of iteration in general.